Today I'm at my father's workshop where he has a number of Formula 1 cars and we're going to go through how F1 suspension works. And just to run through the, the, what happens when, you, when, when, when it gets a load, the push rod load in. Push rod moves up, rocker rotates against the torsion bar, that's the main element, compresses the damper. So the damper goes into bump and then obviously into rebound when, it, when, when the loading comes off the push rod. Uh, this, drops, this link drops down to the anti-roll bar which is mounted on the front of the tub which we'll, we'll show you in a, in a while. Uh, and, and then this is the third damper or pitch control. As the rocker rotates it pulls the third damper together and we start putting a, a load onto the, the bump rubber. They're available in a, in a, in a huge range of different loadings for, for compression. Uh, and it's, it's very minimal. It's high kilograms for, for, for small compression. So we're going to go into that in a bit more detail um, in another video. But basically on the other side where your left hand is there, you would essentially have the other rocker on, on that side, right? So when, when both sides go into compression, for example, when you're going down a straight and there's lots of aerodynamic force going through the car, it lowers the ride height and brings this bump rubber, which is essentially just a bit of rubber, a ring of rubber together, and it acts as a spring. Basically, it's about fine control and keeping the, 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 the car off the road. That's the, one of its main, main functions. Stop it scraping along the floor. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. out of interest, um, should we weigh these parts just to show how light they are, considering the amount of force that's going through them? Yeah. Something to consider when you're thinking about a Formula One car is that the forces that's going through these parts versus how light they are. So let's have a look at how heavy this is. So that's 322 grams, which is super light for something that is actually reasonably big. And just to put that into context, we have a cup of coffee here, which is 533. So a significant amount heavier than this part. What is the rock are made out of and, and what's the kind of process that it goes through when they make it? Okay, to the, 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 the rock is completely hollow obviously, uh, so it has, to, it has to be machined from solid in two separate components. Uh, I love looking at stuff like this because it is so clever and trick. If you can get in close and look at the weld of the two components, it is just unbelievable. So this is made in, in two sections and then welded together down the middle there? As we yeah, can yeah. It's the two halves are machined completely from solid. And what material is it? Titanium. Titanium. So it's yeah. machined from a block of titanium, titanium. Yeah. like a CNC machine or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they weld it together. Obviously, yeah. because it's hollow, you can't make it all in one piece, which is why it needs to be it, welded. It's, yeah, it's, a, it's because of the big diameter, which is giving it its core strength then it's hard to machine it from, from, from solid. And even these little bits on the top here that we can see, they've got those recesses in just to save a bit of weight. Yeah, the, rib, the ribbing obviously, the, all, the, all the loads and, 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 and strengths are calculated and these, these webbings are enabling it to, to reduce the, the thickness of this end of, yeah. the, of the rocker. And which means that you can save a couple of grams here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I guess when you do that across the whole car with that philosophy, you're going to save kilos. In yeah, the there's thousands of components. So you save a, a, a gram on, on each component. It's a kilo. Yeah. Okay, uh, just a brief description of the push rod. Obviously, it's, it's aero section. One to make it run cleanly through the air. There is, there is a downforce benefit in it. Uh, what it would be, I would think, would be marginal. Here we have a section where, sort of, in on the earlier cars, the spherical bearing, there would be a thread and an adjuster here to adjust the ride height. Uh, this they, they they stopped that a long time ago. So the ends the ends are now tie and bespoke to the push rod, and then these shims here. For, for adjusting the ride height. So if you want to raise the ride height, you just put in a, a taller, a bigger shim. Yeah, you just add, you just add, add, add material to it. Yeah, and the yeah. reason that they do that rather than having the screw thread is because it saves weight. And it's cleaner in the airflow. Yeah. Uh, you can see the degree of, of accuracy when the, when the shim is 12.26. 
So that's really, really fine adjustment on the on the push rod there, and so the ride height. Scott Scott will tell you that you know in the cars that he's tested for us, a one millimeter change on rake can be felt. Yeah, it makes a huge difference actually. When you change the rear ride height compared to the front, you increase or decrease the rake, which is the difference between the front and the rear ride height, and you can feel that in the balance of the car. So if you lower the front ride height by a millimeter that essentially means that there's more weight over those front tires pushing them into the circuit um, a little bit harder and therefore you have more grip at the front compared to the rear and so it shifts the balance of the car so moving down moving down the push rod we have this titanium end that is bonded this this from this split here this section here is just a skin for for aero the actual push rod is this section here this titanium end carries on and is bonded in to the the hollow carbon push rod and the same at this end so all all of this section here is hollow this tape is on there because there is a load cell in there and it's holding that it's, it's just tidied the wiring up on it and the load cell records all the loadings through the push rod so any changes on aero they they can instantly see the benefit they can measure roll and stuff like that obviously it's quite a substantial component that's taking a lot of load when you rattle the car over the curbs in the quick stuff when it's got full aero on it it takes a beating and we're looking at less than 500 grams so less than half a kilogram there with all that force going through when you bash your car over the curbs and everything that's absolutely incredible if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to driver 61 because i'm going to be coming back to this workshop every month or so to explain a little bit more about these formula one cars if you enjoy formula one engineering check out these other videos where i explain how formula one cars work cheers and i'll see you in the next video